Hello everybody and welcome to How to Play. Today we are going to be looking at a Kickstarter game. It was released in 2013 called The Agents. It is a game for two to five players and games last about between 15 to 45 minutes, I'd say. So first of all, I have already set up the game. So this is how it is. There are IP at the top. These are the points cards, as well as the currency in the game. There's the deck of agents. There is the deck of missions. Each player will get one of these um, starting cards that explains the abilities of agents, as well as actions, costs, and what data tokens do. So I'm going to pretend to play a four player game here. So I'll be the starting player, second player, third player outside the view of the camera, and fourth player ending the game. Also what needs to happen is that safe houses need to be distributed. These are where you can be playing agents. These represent factions and they are placed in between each player. You can note that the white arrow is pointed clockwise. That's just a way so that each player has one black and one white facing them. I'm sure that it doesn't matter for anything else. Each player will also get three agents. You can't see this. And one mission. So this is how you do a standard four player game. And now let's look at our cards. So we have two standard agents. We can tell because at the bottom they have words and at the top they have half arrows of death. Um, these are also called data tokens. I also have one free agent and there's my mission. So the first thing that we're going to do is look at agents, the differences between free agents and the standard agents, um, how to play them, and what a basic turn looks like. So on each turn we have the actions phase and the missions phase. At the beginning of your turn, unlike some other games, you do not draw any cards. You just play cards that you already have in your hand. So there are four diff different types of actions. First of all, you can place play an agent from your hand. You can reactivate a command facing you. You can buy an agent or a mission, or you can trade in any number of missions. Now, each player has to take two of these actions per turn. You cannot skip your turn and you cannot take one and then pass. You have to ch buy something if you have nothing to play or no missions to trade in. You have to take your actions. So let's look at the standard agents first since this is what you're going to be dealing with the most. We have here the hacker and the decoy. You can see that one has white data tokens and the other one has black data tokens. So when you play a standard agent, what you're going to be doing is playing them on a faction. Safe houses here have um, data tokens facing each direction and you're going to place them beside the safe house. You can place an agent um, with the words facing you and this is what you would call inside the game facing you or away from you. So you have that choice. You can play an agent on either of the factions adjacent to you, but you cannot play an agent on factions that are, are not. So when you play an agent, two things happen. First of all, the player who has the words facing them. So in this case, it would be me immediately has to take the action associated with it. And we'll get to the types of actions that there are later. The next thing that happens is that this data token gets completed. For each completed data token of the same color, that player that the arrow is pointing towards gets two IP intelligence points, the victory points, as well as the currency of the game, they get two of those at the end of their turn. For each mismatched color, so if this was facing me, at the end of my turn, I would get one IP. 
So as you can see, this affects me as well as it affects the other player, since I would take the word-based action and the other player opposite me would receive the IP. This is very fundamental to the game is that each action that you take will also influence somebody else. There are no solo actions. The second type of agent is the free agent. These have words on the bottom, but instead of having arrows at the top, they have an upside down number. This number represents the amount of IP points the, the player who the number faces gets. Free agents can be placed opposite, can be played opposite to any player, not just inside these factions, and are played separate from the factions. So this one, the mercenary, says perform a bonus action and can be used up and does not use up an action to play, it can be played off turn. So when I play this, I could play it opposite the player to my left, the player across from me, or the player to my right. I would immediately get to perform a bonus action and then after that the player opposite me would get three ip alternatively i could play it upside down just like any of the other agents and get the three ip myself but that player immediately gets to perform a bonus action so now let's talk about the different actions that there are for agents i'm going to pull out some here there is move, turn, kill, as well as the last one, extract. So these are the primary types of actions. There are other ones you can see, revive, steal, retire. But the primary four types of actions are turn, move, kill, and extract. Turn means that you um, rotate an agent 180 degrees like this so if i play this card let's say to player four over here i could turn any agent in any faction so i could turn the hacker here turn him upside down and then give player four three ip so this is really useful if you want the ip of a card, but, and it also stops the opposite player from getting that IP. Next type of action is the move action. So this is move any agent from, move an agent from any faction to any neighboring faction. So here I could say, I'm going to move the hacker from here to here. Now note how I moved that. The arrows always should be pointing to the same player when you move from faction to faction. So if I moved him to here, the safe house over there, I would have to rotate him so that these white arrows are still pointing that way. Or so, so if it was like this, the white arrows would have to be pointing that way. When I play it across from me, so on the opposite side, this would simply rotate. So this is white with white, and this would, on the other side, it would be white with white as well. So that is what moving is. When it says um, to move cards within a faction, so it says move any agent inside your neighboring faction, what you would do, is let's say these agents were out like this and it said move any agent inside this faction what you would do is you could move this card in between any other card or um, choose another card and do the same thing so you could do that this is the only way that you can actually get in between cards except for certain exceptions so when you play an agent out 
you will always be playing on the outside of each faction to a maximum of five agents per faction. With the move command, you can rearrange the order. Next is the extract action. So this one says extract any agent from any faction. When you extract an agent, you pick up the agent and put it into your hand. The cards beside them move over, just filling in the gaps. That's very straightforward. The very last one is the kill action. When you kill any agent in this faction with the assassin, you would choose a different agent. The cards can never target themselves and you would flip them sideways so that they are oriented the same direction. So this guy, you know, head at the top, feet at the bottom, flip it over, head at the top, feet at the bottom. Um, dead agents don't disappear so they don't get put into the discard pile, but instead they just remain as an inactive agent. So they no longer provide IP with their data tokens as you can see, there are none, and there are no actions associated with them. There are cards to revive agents, but those are pretty rare. So those are the four types of actions that are on agents. It's pretty straightforward. So that all covers the first type of action that you can play in your turn, is to play an agent out. The second type of action is to reactivate a card facing you. So any card facing you, which means head at the top, feet at the bottom, you can take the text and you can apply it again. So this one says kill any agent in this faction. I could choose as an action to kill another agent in this faction. I don't play another card. I simply use the action of a card that is facing me. So that's the second type of action. The third type is to buy an agent or a mission. Each agent has a cost of one IP point. You would simply take the IP, put it in the bank, and take from the top of the draw deck. With the mission, it's similar, only that they cost three IP. So you would put three IP back in the bank, take a mission, and put it into your hand. Lastly, you can trade any no in any number of missions, which means that if, if I had two missions in my hand, I could choose one or both of them, put them into the missions discard pile, and draw that, that same number again. This is really useful if you do not like the types of missions that you have. So the game ends approximately when some player gets to 40 IP points. So let's say if I got to 40 IP points, the game would go through one last round. So Inside this game, it matters who starts the game. Inside this fake game, I'm starting the game, which means that each other player has to have the same amount of turns. So in this game, we're gonna be collecting IP and collecting agents and placing them, at, them out. Oh my gosh. We talked about the first phase of a player's turn, and now let's talk about the second one. The second phase is the missions phase. In the miss missions phase, you can take and place as many missions on your side of the faction that you want. So I can place two here, I can place two here, I can place one on each, or I can choose to keep them both in my hand. If there's um, missions already out, I can choose to move them, I can choose to pull them to my hand, or I can choose to simply leave them there and do nothing. Mission cards are separated into two parts. First of all, there's the prerequisite, and then there's the IP bonus. Missions, always played on your side of each faction adjacent to you, have these prerequisites for you to get these IP. 
So oftentimes there will be prerequisites for either cards in your hand, cards on this faction that they're attached to, or cards on the opposite faction. So this one says you get one IP for each dead agent in this faction. Now, since you only get IP at the end of your turn, missions add to that number. So let's say that both the assassin and the activist were dead. On this side, let's say that I had the decoy out. So I would be getting two IP at the end of my turn from this faction and nothing from this one. However, I have this mission that says for each dead, dead agent in this faction, one IP point. So there's, since there's two, at the end of my turn, I'd be getting four IP. Now, I'm sure I mentioned this, but there's a limit of two missions per faction. So if you bought some missions and you ended up having five, you can only ever have four out at a time. It's up to you at the end of your turn, which ones you want to have for that turn. You do not need to have any missions out. You do not even necessarily need missions to win, but they are great ways of getting extra IP. The game ends when a player reaches 40 IP. So as soon as they have that in their inventory, so you would just have your money down here in front of you. This is visible to all players. They would say, okay, now I have, let's say, 43 IP at the end of my turn. So this is almost game over. But first of all, we need to make sure everybody else has had an equal amount of turns. So since I'm the starting player, if each other player would get an extra turn, if player four over here would have gotten the 43 IP first, they would be the very last player since they were the last player in the game to start. So having 40 IP does not necessarily guarantee you a win. If I had gotten 43 IP like this, player three could easily get 46 IP on his turn. Now that we've had a look at how to play the agents, what do I think? What is my opinion about the game? Well, first of all, I want to address difficulty. This is the first thing that I will address in all my videos. And it is three out of 10. This game is really easy to pick up. It's really easy to teach other people, it has maybe a 10 minutes or so teaching time, and then you can just jump straight th through it. Um, you know, there might be someone that has questions about when can you use a certain card or what does a certain card do? But for the most part, everything is really straightforward and really easy to play. I really like the interaction aspect where every single card that you play affects another person and how it is incredibly competitive where you're trying to make sure that you have the most amount of data tokens facing you and trying to reduce the amount of data tokens facing other people. So there's still lots of skill involved, but the difficulty is a solid three. The first part of my review is the quality of components. This gets a solid 10 out of 10. These cards are made of plastic, which is part of a stretch goal that the Kickstarter did. And they are almost indestructible. They do not need sleeves at all. You can bend them like this. Normally this would hurt my soul to see it game have cards bent this way but there is no damage whatsoever I've tried to rip them I've tried to dip them in water and they're just plain and indestructible and they're awesome so solid 10 out of 10 the next part is the art you can see right here there's some really really cool art on the box there's cool art on each of these cards the mercenary here, he looks totally BA. The handler here looks like a female version of Professor X. And it, it's really cool. It's not 
perfect. Some of the stuff is a little gruesome. There's one mission here, bloodbath, where there's just blood everywhere and tons of dead people. So that's kind of weird. But for the most part, it is friggin' amazing. And even with the bloodbath card, it's gory, but still awesome art. So my rating for the art is going to be a solid 9 out of 10. Gameplay wise, I'm going to give this a 7 out of 10. Some of the cards don't feel exactly balanced. Some missions feel like they're a lot better than others. And other ones you just don't want to have and you sort of just throw away. It's almost like if you pick them up, you're a little bit unlucky. But that's just my personal opinion. Other people may have not experienced that. And I know they did ex extensive playtesting. So maybe I just don't know how to do it perfectly. Either way, the game's a lot of fun. There's lots of interaction between people. Um, there's lots to do. You never feel like you're limited in the actions you can take. There's lots of ways to get IP and win. So gameplay, seven out of 10. Replayability. This is also getting a, uh, I'll say a six out of 10. That seems a little harsh because the game is a, is a lot of fun and I highly, highly recommend that people buy it. Um, it's only, I only paid $46 and I got six expansion packs with it. This game is highly, highly, highly worth that amount of money. But at the same time, I haven't gone back and played it a whole ton other than in the first few weeks when I got it. No, we still play it inside our gaming group a little bit and we'll be playing it in just a couple weeks here, but it's, it's kind of easy to forget about. It's one of those lighter games that if you're into hardcore tabletop gaming, it's not exactly there, but if you like a fun, casual, but still strategic game, this is great. So overall, I'm giving this a seven out of 10. This is a great game. You should definitely buy it. I'm pretty sure it's $20 right now on Game Salute for a pre-order. Um, I don't know when they're getting it in stock, but it's a crazy good deal for a really good game. And yeah, I recommend that people try it out. It's not without its issues, but this is the first game by this designer and I am highly impressed. Thanks for watching our video and if you have any comments, questions, anything that we did wrong or forgot to mention inside this video, please leave it in the comments below um, or send me a message. I would love to completely redo this video all over again or it's, if it's a small thing, just add some annotations and some explanations inside the description. But for now, check out this game, playtheagents.com. That's where you can find um, lots of rules. You can find a print and play for it. Yeah, keep on gaming. I, I don't have a code thing title. This game's cool.